see if I can do this. Hey sailors, it's been a month since we uploaded a video and the reason is we have a baby now. But that's a story for another time. Thanks for being patient with us. I'm Alex and this is Mandy. We live on a 36 foot boat and get ready to cross an ocean with a baby. We're preparing the boat in Gran Canaria on the Canary Islands, where most transatlantic sailors start their crossing. For a long time we didn't touch a thing on the boat because when we bought her someone gave us good advice. In year one it is your job to adapt to the boat not the other way around. In year two it's your job to figure out what you want to change. In year three commit to the projects and don't mess up. I don't like that. Because yeah. I, I really don't think it's a good idea. In the next weeks, we will improve comfort and independence on a sailboat and prepare the boat to become a full-time home for a young family. Subscribe and join the voyage. See the little things. Usually, liveaboard sailors look for an owner's version of a boat, which on our size of a boat is usually two cabins and storage. We have a three cabin layout, which is used mainly for charter and vacations and it is not optimized for living on board permanently. And for the first year, we didn't change the cabins as we thought we may sell the boat if STLT doesn't grow into something bigger. But it did thanks to you and we were able to continue the journey. Now we need to make a choice and turn the double cabins into dedicated spaces. The starboard cabin will become our main baby cabin. No distractions, no exceptions. It's an always ready to sleep cabin, 100% optimized for comfort. The port side cabin will become our storage and utility area with batteries, inverter, charger, water maker and galley storage. We still have a mattress in there so we got a spare bunk just in case. But this is 10% comfort and 90% storage solutions. And for the sake of completeness we have our main cabin where we sleep. In this episode we focus on the comfort cabin. First thing we wanted to make sure of is having a safe space where there is no escape from. So when we have to do maneuvers or are in sticky situations we don't have to worry about Levi hurting himself or falling. Oh yeah that's his name, Levi. So we basically close off the mattress area of the baby cabin with a lee cloth resulting in a big playpen like area. We want the cloth to be easy to store, easy to pull up and with the least visible attachment points possible. Mandy went to the sailmaker in the area and got a piece of mesh. It's looking alright. A thin stripe of Dacron for reinforcing the edges and some thin Dyneema line for tensioning the top side. I think I did good. For attaching the cloth to the walls and the bottom we went for Tinax buttons. They're barely visible and they click in safely. Perfect. The counterpart of the button is a knob on top of an either self-tapping screw or a regular screw. And that's what's going into the wood panels and cupboard corners. It's barely visible. It's also what some people use for attaching solar panels on Biminis. And look at the bottom. You're waiting for the big result but for some reason we don't have footage of the final product and at the time of editing Shitty. this video we are not on the boat. I don't like that. So all I found was a whatsapp picture we sent to our friends bragging about our new baby prison. All I can say is make sure to subscribe to the channel to see it in action once we cross the Atlantic later this year. Next up the topper. Custom mattresses for boats cost a fortune. So with a bit of work and regular IKEA products, we're not breaking the bank. Our boat mattresses have a three dimensional shape, which is quite hard to reproduce. So instead of changing mattresses, we keep them and add a foam topper. We take out the mattress to draw the custom shape onto our rectangle topper from IKEA. All right, let's see if I can do this. Okay. I was like, oh God, this is gonna go wrong. Good one. Good one, yeah, I made it though. <laughs> with the shape drawn onto the foam, we cut the foam to size with a bread knife and try to not mess up. Using a long bread knife works best and minimizes foam floozies, which we suck up with a vacuum. I 
I flipped the foam once because the beginning and the end of the zipper is here. It's going well. It's so sticky that stuff. And before that was exactly at the piece that I need to fix. And I do not want to take the beginning and the end of the zipper out because it's going to be really hard for me to get that attached well, making my job easier. <laughs> Next, we draw the custom shape of the foam onto the cover and figure out how to bend the corners nicely. Then we cut the cover. Stay tuned, what are you doing? I'm now cutting the fabric to size with my really good fabric scissors, which has obviously been used for something else because it's not cutting that well anymore. So I cut it off. It consists of three separate layers of cloth that all fall apart so Manny needs to stitch those together on the corners. So for example, these bigger pieces, they're very fringy and it's very hard to get this nice, especially because you have this, this fleece or something to make it soft inside. And if I just manage to get the whole thing like this over here, nicely closed off, it's gonna make sewing the zipper on a lot easier. And then I'm going to do like a zigzag on the side. So I'm first gonna sew these sides again together so they look like this so then I can nicely attach the zipper to it again on this part so this is what it looks like all floozy so if I try and sew a zipper on that it's gonna be a lot of hassle and it's gonna look very ugly on the machine I actually found a better stitch that doesn't just zigzag but it also stitches straight on the left and the right side so the result is this that it just really closes it off nicely. And I have basically now one piece of fabric. Done! So now that I sewed this main part of the cover together, I now have my zipper still left over. And then I have a little cord in another piece of fabric here. So I want to put both back on. So you can see this is here in the zipper. Then you have that fabric and in there the cord. So I just try to line it all up nicely here on the edge. And when I manage that well, I get my pin, put it back in, make sure it's attached. When I did that, on all sides, I'm going to first put the actual foam topper back into the cover and see if it fits everywhere well before I sew it back on. So we, we had to take up some of the, the needles here because I had to make three corners now instead of just one. So my zipper is too short, which means I'm going to have to cut this corner more and this corner more to get some extra here so I can pull this because otherwise it's not going to fit. So I'm gonna have to hassle around with that one for a bit to make it pretty. The other one actually worked pretty well. Over here the tricky part is to make sure that the zipper is on the same side here as it is there. And it's not that crooked as you can see. Oh, it is a, oh wow, no, I take that back. It's pretty crooked actually, look at it. <laughs> so, damn it, I might have to redo that too. Sewing zippers is actually not super difficult, it's just tedious. Lining up both parts of the zipper requires some fiddling and since we have a shape that is smaller than the original one, we got some leftover zipper that now dangles on the side. It's probably a better way to do this, but this is the way I can do it. <laughs> and go in a nice straight line. You can technically sew over these needles and it should be fine unless you have as much bad luck as I do. And then with the first needle you sew over, the big needle from the sewing machine actually hits that needle exactly and kills everything. <laughs> I prefer to take them. I'm finished. I did it. This was the actual tricky part. 
make this curve here enough so we'd end up in a nice corner and you can see this is a bit need to fix that and then make sure that this tail lines up and it just does <laughs> it just does i am pretty proud of my sewing skills i've improved since the last cover <laughs> good yeah i'm happy i'm gonna see if i can get an extra piece for this corner but it's gonna be separate anyway so for now this is perfect i say job well done another project finished you and i you and i baby Last project this week, a mosquito net for the main hatch. When we go to the tropics, we want fresh air but no insects. We got by until now, but chasing mozzies in the night is just not our favorite activity, next to feeding our child every three hours. Since Alex has been working on the water maker and the inverter and all the wiring stuff, I decided to start a couple of the sewing projects that I still have lying around. And the first thing I did, do you know where it is? My funky pillow? Is make this uh, nice pillow, which is actually just an extra piece of mattress because this was the corner I was missing in the back cabin. It fits perfectly. So I decided the next one, I'm gonna make a mosquito net for the companion way. So when we go into the tropics, no mosquitoes, but some air. So. I thought the mosquito net's gonna be really like straightforward. I just take a big piece of netting and then to weigh it down, I'm just gonna put like a chain and sew that onto the netting on the side so it stays on the top of the companionway and then also nicely falls down on the front. But turns out it's not that easy because of course it's not a nice rectangular. So we just measured everything and this is kind of what we think would work. So I'm going to cut the mosquito net exactly with all these nice curves and then uh, I'm gonna sew the chain into it with a nice piece of cloth and I'm going to sew that around the chain and with the netting so that the chain is not visible. Just sewing the chain onto the edge of the mosquito netting now because I'm going to make an extra cover around the chain but I don't want it to move around so like this I can make sure that it fits well so I have the chain here that is the weight on my mosquito net so it won't fall down and will stay in place and to make sure that I can sew on the cover that already sew it on partially here so it looks nice and the chain doesn't make noise and everything I first hand sewed the chain onto the netting because that makes it a lot easier plus I had a bit too much chain which is actually perfect because at the top part that I'm gonna put on the hatch I now put a double chain because then I have a little bit more weight because it has to hold the whole thing and when I just had one part piece of chain it didn't hold up so well and it kind of fell off so this is holding a lot better. So for the cover of the chain, I'm using this piece of cloth, which is actually a hammock that I found somewhere, like half a year ago, somebody left it at the trash. I took out the metal bars and then just washed the cloth and thought, okay, that might come in handy one day because it's pretty strong material. It is probably UV resistant-ish. So I kept that. I cut off some 10 centimeter pieces of cloth here and so the ends nicely and now I'm just going to put that around the chain like this and then just sew it together so there's a nice cover around the chain and it actually looks pretty cool color wise a few stitches later this is the result it works quite well the weight holds the net straight down and closes off vertically it fits right into the grooves on top and we only got some minor gaps around the corners 
but we hope to keep out most insects like this. To be honest, having a three cabin version and not the two cabin owners version does come in beneficial for us now because A, we don't need a bigger comfort cabin. The beds are big enough and if they get bigger, you roll around even more when you're in Honest Valley Anchorage or when you're on passage. Second, accessing the storage cabin from the inside is a big plus. If I'd imagine I'd have to crawl in on the top of the boat through the locker to access this storage space, that's kind of a pain. Honestly, the items that you'd store there would be very different to the ones that we store there. We have food in there, we have clothes. We walk in there every day. So now that we separated the two spaces, I think I like it even more than the two cabins version. The one downside though is that we do not have the U space kitchen with a separate fridge and massive space on the stern of the boat. Kind of annoying, but I think, I think I'm happy with it the way it is. I feel like soon is a good time to have a look around the improvements in the storage cabin, which also houses our main electric setup. We get a new inverter and don't mess up. It's been a pleasure having you. Thank you for your time. Like and subscribe. Bye bye.